consider that we are in a great battle between heaven and hell in the season after Pentecost, but it is a supernatural battle. battle. It's a battle between the Word of God and the lies of Satan. And this battle has gone on since the beginning of time. And every now and then as we progress in this battle, now the church has been around for 2,000 years. During the course of these 2,000 years, there have been built cathedrals. There have been built dioceses. There have been built monasteries. There have been built many religious orders. There have been built Catholic armies. There are many Catholic bishops. We have more than 200 history of more than 200 Catholic popes. We have all a great history of so many men that have followed Jesus Christ. Some of them wicked, many of them wicked, but a great many saints. And as we see these great numbers, we are tempted by an age-old temptation. A temptation that goes back that God himself spoke of when he spoke to Gideon. When he told Gideon, when, when I send my army, those who fight for God, it is God that gives the victory. But the trouble is that for some reason, even though we know this is true, if I send you into battle with 10,000 soldiers, and you fight against 60,000 of the enemy, and you destroy them, you will think that you did it because of your strength. Therefore, he had too many soldiers, and we finally fought with only 300. We find this also in all throughout sacred scripture, and all throughout the history of the church. We know, our faith tells us, and we have the facts of history to back it up, God alone gives the victory. When the Jews destroyed the Egyptian army, it was destroyed by the hand of Aaron. God told Moses, and Moses told Aaron, Aaron, take my staff and hold it in the air. And Aaron took the staff of Moses and held it in the air, and the water was parted by the word of God spoken through Moses and by the hand of Aaron. And then they crossed through the Red Sea. And God said that Moses walked through the Red Sea with that staff. And he got to the other side, and all 600,000 of the Jews passed through the other side, not including the women and children. God then spoke to Moses again. Moses then spoke to Aaron. Aaron, take my staff. And Aaron took the staff and held it in the air. And then by the hand of Aaron, by the word of Moses coming from the mouth of God, the sea went back and wiped out the entire army of the enemies of God. And by this great miracle of the Old Testament, God showed in a most clear way, He alone gives the victory. He alone conquers souls. He alone brings souls to God. He alone to defeats Satan. And yet time and time again, throughout the history of the church in its Old Testament and also in the New Testament, so many souls will forget that. When we arrive at the Gospel today, we're reminded again. Noah, or rather Peter, was a good fisherman. Though the only times we have recorded of his fishing is when he failed. Catching no fish the night that he met Christ today. Catching no fish again at the end of his life. But he was a fisherman. He knew how to fish. He had a boat. He had nets. But there's something that happens when we come in contact with Jesus Christ. And this we will see many times. There are signs that Christ is coming. There are some people, if, they, if you have a wooden floor, and the wooden floor is a little two by four, is holding up the bottom of it, it's not the strongest floor. If a little light person comes to see you, you may not know. But if a giant weighing 400 pounds comes, there will be a rumbling of the boards. There will be an earthquake. You will know that Fat Albert is coming. There will be signs of his coming. There are some people that are a mobile disaster. Things start to go wrong. Things start to happen and you know that they are coming. And the Lord Jesus Christ comes like this. There are signs of his coming. St. Peter had fished all his life. And St. Peter was a successful fisherman. And St. Peter did well. And he had a, uh, the sons of the Zebedee Fishing Company. He had partners with James and John in his own boat plus another boat. Remember in, in India, when the fishermen would come and say, We're doing very well, Father. We are doing very well. Now they're very rich. And they are able to buy a second boat. And so we go out to bless their boats. Go out on the water and bless the boats. And the fishermen were able to buy their second boat. So for St. Peter to have a second boat, he was a very successful fisherman until just before he met Jesus Christ. And maybe this is one way in which St. Peter felt a certain similarity, 
a certain understanding, a certain bond. He had many ways in which he was bonded with St. Paul, but one of them was, it was through blindness and through a crisis and through failure and through being knocked off a horse that Saul first met our Lord Jesus Christ. And it was through a night of bad fishing and through a night of failure in his business that St. Peter met Jesus Christ. And Simon's name would be changed to Peter and Saul's name would be changed to Paul. And they would both be transformed even more than the other apostles by their meeting with Christ. And maybe one reason is because they met him after a failure. And Simon, the son of John, was there washing his of nets. And the boat was moored next to the, to the sea, next to the shore. And what happens? Our Lord Jesus Christ comes and preaches. He comes and preaches. And when he preaches, all the crowd gathers around him. And when he has finished preaching, he then says, Simon, Duke in Altum, let down your net into the deep. Now this is the test. And this test is being made to us right now. It will happen in the very near future. In the next few years, or even less. In the very near future. One day, the priests of tradition will let down their nets. Empty and catching fish. After so many failures in the catching of fish. Which are the fishers of men. And then the Lord will say, let down your net one more time. But we are tired. We've been letting down our net and letting down our net and letting down our net and it's nothing but failure. We're just pulling up worms and we're pulling up uh, uh, sea moss. We're not pulling up any fish. Let down your net. And St. Peter, or Simon, before he became St. Peter, he was not yet a saint. You can, have, you can feel the frustration or the doubt to a certain extent in his voice. We have labored all night and caught nothing. We've let down the net so many times last night, it's not funny. And we've caught nothing. But then, the grace of the Holy Ghost enters into Simon. Because he has listened to the words of Christ. And he has believed them. Now this is what's happening in the church today. Are we listening to the words of Christ? We read this gospel every fourth Sunday. Our Lord Jesus Christ dies every Good Friday. We have his resurrection every Easter Sunday. We have the great conversion of Pentecost every year. We read every year the great victories of the, of the power of the Word of God. The power of His divine truth. We know the saints that we read about throughout the calendar year. And all the great saints that we celebrate. Who will overcome great adversity simply because they believe with their hearts. And with their minds. And with their whole being. In the Word of God. And here is St. Simon. Who is not yet a saint. He's listened to the good sermon, and so have many thousands of others. Duke in Altum, let down the net. You just got finished cleaning the net, let's make it a mess so you can clean it again. Then you have to put it out again. Let down the net. You have failed so many times, let down the net. But we have hunted and all fished all night. And furthermore, there is a great crowd and there has been noise. You've been talking for the last several hours and fish don't like the noise. But at thy word, I will let down the net. And the time is coming in our holy church, and it is now, where our Lord wants us only to let down the net only because of his word. During the last 2,000 years, and the majority of this time, we let down the net at the word of Christ. But we see that the neighbors let down the net. We're like St. James and John. James and John were sitting in their boats. Their nets were also empty. And then they saw St. Peter let down the net. And he got a great catch of fish. So then they did the same. And they put down their nets. And they helped catch the fish. And they both put so many both fishes into the boats that both boats were sinking. And also the fathers of the church tell us both boats were sinking. But neither boat sank. And what is more a miracle is the nets were breaking. So much weight of fish in the nets. But the nets did not break. Because God is protecting the nets. And God is protecting the boat. And how